standing up to the dry conditions we've got at the moment is a smaller version of the Persian silk tree, Albizia julia brisson. This one's called Umbrella. Still got the same lovely little fluffy flowers, the pink flowers. But the big one by the Round Temple is really enormous and uh, you can only see it from a distance from certain vantage points. It's so tall. In fact, there is the <clears throat> large, normal Albizia julibrisin rosea in the distance which you may or may not be able to make out. Here it is from the other side. And you see the pink powder puffs up against the blue sky. You can also see that the leaves are suffering somewhat from the drought, even though it's a tree which enjoys heat enjoys heat but there must be some moisture otherwise it just is not happy. The enormous eucalyptus was here and you, you can see the um, remnants of the trunk. Uh, it was taken down very carefully by our skilled tree surgeons, but one branch came and knocked into this lovely Aurelia. But anyway, a small price to pay and it's now flowering beautifully. This is the variegated one with the silver variegations. In the silver variegation on the outside of the leaf. And then there's the wonderful froth of flowers. There is a form with um, yellow edging, or if you want to be a bit more romantic, gold edging to the leaves which is called Oreo variegator. But this one is the uh, one with the white margins of the leaf or silver. It's uh, propagated by grafting. And this is quite difficult. It's also very slow growing and therefore very expensive. I planted this, uh, this was a present of my 50th birthday. And uh, that was 24 years ago. You do the math, as they say. Moving, uh, I apologize for the dog. I think it spotted a squirrel up the tree, which drives it berserk. Anyway, sorry, uh, but uh, moving past the, uh, the remnants of that giant eucalyptus on the other side, we see a shrub which is absolutely covered in white, slightly scented flowers. And uh, this is a privet from China. It's uh, pretty undistinguished, I would say, when it's out of flower, but it has its moment of glory for about three weeks when it is absolutely covered in its uh, privet-like flowers. And the insects do love it. There's some bees on the flower there. This is uh, rejoices in the name Ligustrum Quihui. Strange 
name, I agree. Uh, it owes its name uh, Quihui to a Mr. Kihu, or Monsieur Kihu. Who he, I ask. Monsieur Kihu was a superintendent in the uh, in the Botanic Garden in Paris in the 19th century. It's uh, swarming with bees. And I've noticed there's a lovely hornet there as well. Just what we want. So I'm not going to get too close. I'm not really enjoying being desiccated in the drought. Here's this eucomus or pineapple lily. And this is the one which is supposed to be sparkling burgundy. It's burgundy because the leaves are normally a sort of reddy brown colour. Not in this weather. So you can see the uh, pineapple type tuft on the top of the flower spike. But coming in closer, I think they are amazingly jewel-like really. And uh, looking still rather droopy, although we had a good shower of rain yesterday, first time for several weeks, is this hibiscus hybrid with very large flowers. I think it's easier if we go around the other side. Like many hibiscus uh, this one, the flowers are quite fleeting, they only last a day or two, but there are always others coming up behind. This one has really very large flowers and it's called Wolberton's Rose Moon. Of course, coping well with the heat <clears throat> and drought is this uh, Californian Epilobium canum, what I used to know as Zarshneria californica. Comes from the Chaparral, which is a sort of Mediterranean equivalent in, in uh, the Western United States. It pops up and forms quite a widespreading bush. And it's very jolly for several weeks of the year with its greyish leaves. Pollinated in its native California by uh, hummingbirds. Unfortunately, not here. I wish we had hummingbirds pollinating it. Anything to see, Bert? Are you just hot? Looking for squirrels. Anyway, coming around for the large Albizia is another rather droopy looking small tree, which is absolutely covered in its little tiny white flowers, which tend to hang down from the branches and They're easier to see from below, but anyway, they're on intriguing little dingly dangly flowers with a yellow stamen sticking out. Looking at it from under a leaf, the sweet little flowers with their reflex petals, tiny lilies almost. This is Alangium platanifolium. Uh, walking.
walking along the retaining beds. This slightly droopy fuchsia has something poking up and mingling with it. Look. Something that copes really well with uh, drought. In fact, it favors poor, well-drained soils is this Mexican perennial. It's a lobelia called Lobelia laxiflora. And it's got a narrow leaf form, which this is, called Angustifolia. And it's really spread well here over three years to form this clump, which is about a meter by half a meter long. And the bees are really buzzing around it. Now, in spite of all this dry weather and drought, this uh, hydrangea aspera, which I collected in China all those years back, is uh, flowering really well. It's, uh, it got so large and came out over the path that uh, we did a bit of drastic pruning. The front of it, we cut back to really a few stumps and look at it, it's gone berserk. Now we've got a peacock butterfly enjoying the nectar and uh, several bees as well. Lovely. This is Hydrangea aspera, subspecies Strigosa. Well, there we have it. I'll just tell you, um, I collected this um, at the Wollong Nature Reserve, where they, they have um, a reserve of where the pandas live. Uh, we never saw a panda, in fact, we saw lots of hydrangeas. We stayed in a hotel um, in the uh, outside the nature reserve, and it's also near a big marble quarry, and we rather dangerously met these vastly overloaded lorries veering wildly from side to side, uh, and we had to try and pass them. Um, the road was only half made up. It's really rather scary. Anyway, the hotel was a bit basic. It was a massive room which we descended into in the mornings for our breakfast. And I must say, I do look forward to breakfast normally when one has been doing walking. Uh, unfortunately, uh, this breakfast consisted of uh, dumplings and rather strange, um, very, very thin gruel. So, Unfortunately, not all that appetizing. Most disappointing. However, <clears throat> our botanical leader who's been here before had brought some Nescafe and uh, powdered milk, which I suppose was something. <laughs> <laughs>